Hello once again. The last time that I was demonstrating uh, refilling and the use of uh, these China carts for the R2000, I had this particular style, which is a smaller volume per cart. I think it only holds between 10 and 11 ml max of ink so you do have to top them off quite regularly they also have a pretty convenient self priming chamber which is located right here this is the submicron screen that filters the ink prior to exiting through the port the big difference about these cards was that they do have a battery powered chip on them and every time you refill one you short out those two little round terminals with anything a paper clip a small flat screwdriver whatever you have that's metallic and conducts electricity which means you have to remove the cart to refill it and then reset the chip back to full by shorting out those two terminals as I said and then reinserting it back into the printer now eventually that would wear out the seal or it could possibly wear it out. I don't know how many uh, cycles of removing and reinserting you could probably get away with before you would have to actually replace the cart itself as it would eventually and theoretically could lose the sealing capabilities of this uh, exit port on the ink stem of the uh, printer's uh, head carriage that has to seal a hundred percent otherwise you would introduce air possibly into the system and you would be constantly complaining of nozzle clogs when in reality it's just air in the system so ideally in a perfect world we would love a system that you could just refill in place or in situ and reset in place sort of like a, like a continuous ink system that has a push button mechanism to reset the chips all back to full when one reads low. In this case we do not have that luxury as these are individual cards and they must be reset one by one. However, in my eternal search for a better product I found this type of a cartridge it uses an external, basically it's a damper. They're all identical except for the different color label. But the cards themselves are identical. However, they sit on a removable carriage that has a chip that is resettable by pushing a button. Now, I have yet to test these. I've only uh, filled up the gloss optimizer cartridge and I'm going to go ahead and give you a demonstration on how these are filled quite easily and the beauty of these what I love the most about them is that I was able to put in almost 20 ml of ink per card as you can see they are taller in profile and they actually do hold almost twice the amount of ink which means uh, less uh, replacement and better than that if the imagine for instance if this particular chip is not correctly coated for 10 ml of ink and rather it's coated for the OEM amount which is around I don't know about I guess about 15 ml not entirely sure I would have to check up on that myself um, but anyway if this chip tells the printer driver that you still have ink when in reality you have run out of ink you see you would end up not only with an empty cart possibly if you let it go really really low but worse than that is that inconvenience of having to reprime that chamber every time you refill it so I gave a recommendation that you would not wait until this chip on this type of card reports it as being say you know 10 percent 
I would I would recommend that you fill it before it reaches 30 even 40 percent I would just top it off and reset the chip by shorting out the little two terminals all right so now we're gonna put those away and we're gonna take a look at these <clears throat> basically it goes like this let me go ahead and remove the rubber band and we'll stack them up like so so what we have is a cartridge again with internal chambers and those are there for the ink to circulate through and keep it in, under suspension so it's less likely to settle if you did not have these baffles the ink would just sit there and, and just drop in volume by introducing this that vertical baffle and also horizontal baffles the ink has to sort of circulate its way through this is this is reinserted into the head as a unit if ever if ever and it's very unlikely that it would ever occur if you ever have a problem with one of the dampers it's a replaceable unit you just throw that one away and put a new one in so let's replace it back there is a little two um, channels and a corresponding slot so you just line it up and insert it back in position and it clips and now the whole unit just goes into the printer now what I am hoping happens and this I will only know when I run one of these cards low is I want to be able to top it off in the printer hit that button and hopefully I'll be back to full we will see I may have to turn the printer off and power it back on for that actual sequence to uh, actually take effect so we'll see okay this is how they arrive this is the gloss optimizer cart and basically it comes in a vacuum sealed or semi vacuum sealed it's not really a full vacuum but it's a nice little bag to protect it now the unique thing about these is that it's actually a two-part unit this is a damper this gets filled with ink in this case it'll be the gloss optimizer now this little harness here holds the chip which is resettable by pressing this button now what I have to figure out because of course this comes with zero instructions from the manufacturer is whether this has to read empty before it will reset or can they be reset at any time and that I will not know until I have run down some of the uh, cards that I have installed on my R2000 already now another very peculiar thing is that this is really the vent which you remove during printing however the fill plug has been covered up by this label that says do not remove well this is the actual fill plug fill plug this is the ink chamber you cannot fill through the vent I mean it's not recommended at all that you do so so I'm gonna go ahead very carefully just score right the area where the the actual um, plug is located all I need to do is have a area where I can remove that plug and there it is this is crazy but so far the carts are working uh, great good flow no problems no no clogs whatsoever and I'll show you next how I fill these up do the actual initial filling up of this uh, type of cartridge another very very um, good feature now if you viewed my earlier uh, video where I demonstrated the regular 
uh, R2000 with the chip that you uh, reset by shorting out the two uh, terminals. You remember that it only took about maybe 10 to 11 ml to actually fill the cart. Now, one advantage of that particular style of cart, it's almost self priming. It will literally prime itself. And although I did use some vacuum assist to fill them up initially, I realized as I was filling them up that it's a self priming cart. This is not a self priming cart, this has to be uh, primed. Uh, so I will go ahead and uh, remove this plug, fill a syringe uh, with gloss optimizer and we'll uh, go ahead and fill them up with vacuum assist. Now, the way this works, if you notice, multiple baffles and chambers internally. The fluid will go in the ink and you would think that the bottom ink would have direct access to the uh, exit port. It does not. There is a siphon system and it's located in the rear of the cart. The reason there are so many baffles is to allow the ink as it is dropping in volume to circulate through all of these openings and it keeps the pigment uh, particles suspended. These two chambers, this is the vent chambers, I believe. I'm looking at this and trying to uh, figure out the structure of these cards. Now, the way I have seen other cards operate is that this little tube right here, this little channel, it's a siphon that draws it from the very, very bottom of the cart up, over, and down through here, and then across the submicron filter, and then down to the exit port. And that is the circulation. If you uh, allow it to reach empty, you'll break the siphon. So I think that once we have established a properly working siphon out to the exit port. What we have to do is when it reaches say 10% um, and you can just remove the damper to check it manually. Go ahead and remove this plug, top it off, reset the button and you should be good to go. So let me go ahead and get some gloss optimizer and we'll begin to uh, refill this. Here's a close-up of the uh, filter side the chip the button and the left side of the cartridge and you can sort of see all of the uh, different baffles that are located internally okay let me go ahead and proceed I'm going to remove the fill plug and insert the syringe into the opening giving it a little twist make sure it is, it is sealing correctly and then I'm going to draw back and let go by creating a vacuum inside the cart and then letting go the ink will go exactly where it's meant to go. Let me get the lighting adjusted here so you can see. Now, in the rear, you should be able to see, if this was a darker ink, you would be able to see this chamber filling up. And that's really the main goal here. And you can see it beginning to fill up with the clear optimizer. I'll give you a close-up of that a little bit later. And again just continue pumping until no more ink will go in. And that's basically what's happened now. As you can see there is no more ink going in. In this case is the gloss optimizer. Now several other things have happened. This has filled up. There was a little bit of 
few bubbles there, but that has nothing to do with the um, exit exiting of the ink. The ink is actually dropping to the bottom, as you can see here. This is all filled to the top. So ink from the bottom is being siphoned up this little channel and then across onto this chamber, which is now full, and through the filter and down this, this uh, side channel here to the exit port, directly to the exit port. And basically the printer is going to suction ink out and as long as we do not run this cart completely dry we will not break that siphon so imagine you're siphoning uh, some gas out of your gas tank for your lawnmower you need to create a siphon and once you have that established uh, fluid will continue to, to uh, flow so if we get a uh, air break down in this area here, we will have to reprime the cart. So the idea is not to have to do that. You want to avoid that at all costs. Now this should allow us to be able to, when ink is low, to refill the low tank, top it off, if you will, with just a, a small syringe and a needle, and then plug it back up the air vent plug will have to be removed through an operation and hopefully we'll be able to reset that channel by just pressing the button and ideally the, the, the whole idea behind this is to uh, avoid having to remove the cartridge now another advantage if ever my cart goes bad either you know I lose a weld internal weld or something I can just replace the damper and the same thing with the uh, chip unit. Say the damper is perfectly good, I can replace the uh, chip unit. So I don't have to replace the whole thing. Alright, so that's, that's how you fill these up. It's rather easy, very simple. A second method of doing the initial fill is to remove the fill plug and rather than doing a vacuum fill as we did earlier we simply inject a total of 18 ml of ink and then we will do a manual type of prime directly from the ink outlet with a smaller syringe and a special priming tip Okay, now with this special tip, and these you can obtain at various uh, ink providers, they have these available. The regular end of the normal syringe is just too thick to enter, so many manufacturers of refilling uh, kits will provide these for you. We're going to insert it in place, and I'm going to flip the card around because I want you to see what's going to happen here. As I pull, you're going to see that chamber fill. And as you can see, I am drawing ink at the bottom as I should. And that's basically all that happens. So we have drawn ink through the exit port. The ink has rose, dropped gone into the filter chamber and out the bottom you might want to tap it in case there's a bubble stuck down there and that's basically it now we have dropped our ink level of course so we will go ahead and uh, fill that back up and it's as simple as that I have been wondering whether uh, these carts would be able to be topped off while still sitting in the print head carriage and then I would reset them in situ and that would be you know a dream come true for individual type carts. 
So I, after my initial setup, and I had to run a couple of cleaning cycles in order to get the ink to uh, flow through the head completely, and I got a perfect um, nozzle check, I noticed that um, everything had dropped an equal amount. The gloss optimizer had gone down somewhat more because I had printed two glossy uh, letter size images. Actually I printed three. And so I decided to go ahead and uh, top it off, run an experiment, then I pressed the little reset button and when I hit the ink button on my printer console it went through the purging cycle which means that it thought I had replaced that cart with a full cart. So as you can see, it is full. So now I'm going to go to the printer itself and take you through the steps that you would have to go through to just top off these cards and reset them in place. Now, of course, it will only probably take a few mils of uh, ink. I'll go ahead and choose either one of these colors and then off camera I'll top the rest of them off and uh, we'll come back and view this to show you that indeed it is reset to full. I went ahead and moved my printer over to a uh, little tabletop desk so that you can have a clear view of the process. So we would begin by hitting the ink button and that will move the carriage over to the change location. Then we would open up the lid. So now that we have the lid open the next thing we do is remove the fill plug. Now they're a little bit tight. In fact they are perfectly flush fitting so often it's rather difficult to remove them and I just used a pair of tweezers to aid me in removing or loosening them. If you have long fingernails it will be no problem at all so all you have to do is catch the little center hole catch the edge and pull it right off. So I've already have this one loosened so I'll go ahead and remove the plug itself and we'll plug in the air vent. The reason we do that is once both holes are open the ink can free flow its way right out into the uh, print head. So now I'm just going to insert my needle into the fill hole and very very carefully fill until it just reaches the top and then pull back. As you saw it didn't take really very much ink. Hopefully what's going on is that the chip is actually over reporting the volume and that is something that we really want. We want the chip to say the card is empty long before the card is actually empty. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and re-inject this back into my ink bottle. Be back in a couple of seconds. So now that we have gone ahead and topped off that card, the yellow card in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and, and press the yellow button. Just hold it for a couple of seconds and that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the rest of the colors. I've already done the uh, gloss optimizer. After each fill up I'm going to reset the, each button, close the lid, hit the ink button and it should uh, initialize the cartridges, run a, a short purge cycle which is normal for every time anyone ever changes a color with a new card. Say for instance I was running OEM cards and one of them was low the minute I exchange just that one card, it's going to run a purge cycle on all colors. Which is a waste of ink. 
So rather than do that, what I will do from now on is any time any of my colors is running very low, I'll just top the rest of them off regardless of what level they are in and then reset every one of them. That way I'm only running a purge cycle after every full card. If you don't do that, what happens is that you create kind of a domino effect. At first everything is sort of even and as you continue to print, some of the cards are used up faster than others, some of the colors, and you get to a point where you're just constantly refilling one card while another one may be maybe uh, about a fifth to go and within a couple of prints that one will need, need to be refilled and so on and so on and so on so rather than do that I just fill them all at once press all the buttons reset them all at once and that way I'm good to go until a full card goes empty again so basically you are reducing the purge cycles by a factor of the number of cards that you have and that's a good practice to um, get into. All right, so let me go ahead and fill the rest of them up. I'll come back and uh, we'll go through the next step. All right, I just finished topping off all the other colors. So we'll just go ahead and proceed to press all the little buttons. the lid, press the ink button and the printer should now go through its purging cycle. It is going now through an agitation cycle. As you can see, it's quite a robust agitation as it is actually moving my table. Now it's purging and all the ink goes into my waste ink tank that I externally mounted. That's a modification that every every Epson owner should perform unless you are running a pro level printer that contains or has already a factory installed waste in ink tank. We need to do that so that our waste ink pads do not get saturated with ink that it will use during these types of uh, purge cycles or cleaning cycles if you have a clogged nozzle and so on. Now eventually the um, ink pad counter will reach its maximum setting and it will render the printer unusable you need to reset the counter and there are utilities to perform this and I'll have some more information at the end of this video on that okay so I'm gonna cut away let this thing finish doing its thing we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you the ink level indicator which should read completely full for all the uh, different positions okay we're back to the devices and printers dialog window and as you can see I have a multitude of printers installed on this machine we're gonna go ahead and right click and here we go and as you can see every color is full so there you go it's that simple seems to be very reliable at least so far 
So let's go ahead and uh, print a nozzle check and we'll check that. In fact, you should do this after every top off or refill. And go ahead and place it on here. And I'll take a close up of it for you. Okay, as you can see, except for the yellow, which is very difficult to discern, there are no missing lines anywhere. Now what I would do after this is run a uh, purge chart to determine how good the ink flow is, whether I'm getting any ink starvation at all. And that is a problem that could occur on some types of uh, refillable carts. So before I leave you, I will go ahead and run a purge uh, sheet on a sheet of glossy paper. All right, here you can see the uh, chart. And this is the finished print. I'm looking for any kind of horizontal banding whatsoever. Basically, it covers the main primary colors that the printer utilizes. Black, cyan, magenta, yellow, red, and orange. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just testing to make sure that I am getting the proper uh, feed. There's no difference between anywhere on the print uh, indicating that I was uh, experiencing any ink starvation. So apparently these cards seem to be working out quite well. So far so good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and send a print to the R2000 and this will tell us whether the cards are working properly, at least uh, in regards to ink flow and such. I'm going to be sending, it's a highly saturated uh, shot of a, an old abandoned building that's been graffitied and muraled all over the place as you can see. Though it is sideways. And once it is printed I'll go ahead and uh, We'll view it closely with my lights under the proper lighting and then you should be able to see uh, uh, the color fidelity of this uh, image specialist ink set for the R1900 and the R2000. They're both identical ink sets by the way. Now I'm going to um, be using Q Image Ultimate. I have disabled color management on the printer and I am utilizing the uh, Epson ICC profile for premium glossy paper. Now the kicker here is that I'll be using uh, actually printing on Kirkland glossy paper which is a the Costco brand and actually it's quite an excellent paper and very reasonably priced so I use it for a lot of my uh, letter size glossy photos. So let's go ahead and check my settings. I got the correct printer chosen I'm shooting sheet here. We'll go into the settings and color management is off. Premium, premium photo paper glossy quality. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a 4, which is not quite the highest. The highest is 2880 dots per inch. I'm going to use that 1440 because it basically you just don't. Uh, see the difference and it uses a lot more ink at the higher uh, resolution settings. I'm going to go ahead and leave the gloss optimizer on auto and hit OK and we'll send the job over to the printer and it's going to load it or spool it and once it is completely spooled it will go ahead and uh, make a little beep which will tell us that the printer has received it like so okay and here fresh out of the printer are the two prints that I made I showed you this one and I decided to try to do the impossible as this printer is not designed for black and white work and as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful and neutral 
and there is no difference in tonality between uh, the range from dark to through the middle tones through the highlights and there is detail even I don't know whether the video can pick it up but there's detail that is not as white as the paper. Paper would be a an equivalent to a 255 value and I, I have beautiful detail even on the brightest portions of those uh, storm clouds. The blacks are very deep and, and neutral. And this is a little artsy rendition of a of a an image of a field, a farm. And then over here, this is the one we just printed, and this is what I was looking for. Whether it will pick up all of the beautiful uh, colors, highly saturated colors. And again, I don't believe the video can do it justice because I see all of the different nuances that I saw on my monitor. In fact, I wish I could show you this side by side with my monitor, but again, it's, it's almost impossible to uh, uh, shoot um, an image of a, or shoot a video of a photograph that I just printed under my room, incandescent light and then uh, have it match the monitor. The monitor, video sees uh, monitors as a very bluish type of light. So um, it's almost impossible, but take my word for it, it's almost a perfect match to my monitor. And if I had gone ahead and created a custom ICC profile for this uh, Kirkland paper, I'm sure I could have improved upon it even more. Okay, before I leave you, I've decided to really go for broke and print a fine art black and white image with it. Now, let me show you what I have just sent to the uh, printer. This is a shot of Little Round Top in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I printed it on my Epson Pro 3800 using OCP German K3 inks meaning it has a matte black as well as a photo black but also a light and light light black and it is uh, the perfect um, printer for printing fine art black and white images and this was printed on Red River paper it's called Aurora Old Press White Natural now I have sent the same file using Red River's ICC profile. I'm using the a custom made ICC profile for this paper that I did myself using a uh, X-Rite Color Monkey. So I'm going to move the camera down, pan it down so you can see the emerging print. As you can see the print is emerging. And here is the finished print done on a printer that it's not supposed to be able to print black and white due to the fact that it only has one shade of black so what it has to do in order to reproduce gray is it has to mix composite colors theoretically if you mix cyan yellow magenta paint you should get a black but in reality it doesn't work out that way you always have a bias or a uh, change of tonality from black through the middle tones to the light tones. It's not a linear proportional uh, combination of colors. It just does not work out that way. Now, the big differences that I noticed, my blacks are blacker on the uh, one printed with the OCP German inks. Uh, they unfortunately do not have a version for the R1900 or R2000 yet. It's under development. As soon as it becomes available, I will be ordering some of those inks. Now, I presume that if I was to, for instance, create a uh, custom ICC profile, I could probably uh, improve on this image quite a bit as I am just using their generic uh, profile for Red River Aurora Natural White 
using OEM Epson inks. They expect you to use Epson inks. Okay, until next time, bye-bye.